Hey, I'm Vicki, I'm a filmmaker, and I'm trying to challenge myself to film more, to edit more, and to put more stuff out there. Today, I wanted to take you behind the scenes on how I made my garage into a spaceship. I've never done something like this before. I am not a cinematographer, I'm not a gaffer. I'm intimidated by lighting setups. So I thought, what better way to get unintimidated was just to do it. I started doing this photography challenge, making it into video, and on week three, I was thinking about what I wanted to do for the prompt, which was soft, and for some reason, somewhere in my brain was like, can you make it look like you're in a spaceship? Nothing to do with soft. But the whole point of this challenge that I'm doing is to just to do more, to make more, to have ideas and see them through. So I thought, I'm inspired, let's try it, see if it works out, and then maybe I could create a story out of it. My first thought was that I could use reflection. If I sat in the passenger seat of my car in my garage and reflected stars onto it, could that work? So I just started piece by piece. One of the first things I thought about was putting a nebula on my iPad. And how do you get a whole piece of space on your iPad? Um, I went to the, I'm like bringing it up, but I could just like put it right here. I went to nasa.gov and Googled the, uh, the Webb telescope and uh, everything's fair use there. Uh, not Maybe not everything, but a whole lot of phenomenal images are public domain. So I found some images I liked and then I put one of them on my iPad. I liked some of these other ones that are like, really vibrant nebulas and lots of colors, but I was dealing with blackness and I didn't want it to be just like, here are the edges of this frame. So uh, I chose one that's pretty, that expands, expands into blackness and I held it up close to the, the window so that the camera would see the reflection in the window of the iPad. And then I was like, okay, well, how do I fill that out? I want some like, night sky and stars. Thankfully, a friend's dad was liquidating his photography studio that morning while I was thinking about all these things. And one of the things that they were selling were these rolls of seamless backdrops. And I got a great deal, it was like $2 for this huge roll. So I'm like, okay, if I destroy this a little bit, it's just $2. I rigged it up on a, a PVC pipe frame, poked holes in the paper, and then put my ring light behind it. And then I was like, okay, well, how do I add some movement? How do I make it look like I'm not just like sitting there statically? Um, and like, it wouldn't make sense for me to be like, ah, because once you're like finished accelerating, you're just sitting there. It's like getting on a highway, Newton's third law. Like you're just, it's your frame of reference. I was like, oh, we have this Christmas projector. Um, that's just red and green and it kind of does like swirly lights and and that looked kind of cool At this point, I'm like, what else can I add? And I thought, ooh, what about the holiday lights the string lights that we have? Um, but those are too uh, the bulbs are too big to To clock as stars in the reflection and so I was like, ooh, what if I threw them in the cab of the car with me to light me a little bit. And so I'm like stringing the string lights into the car, throwing them in, keeping the back door open. So I had the camera like right here, looking in and through, and you can see the back wall. So I had a moving blanket, just draped it over that side of the car. So that meant I couldn't get in because the camera was here. Couldn't get in on the other side, on the driver's side, because there was a blanket there that I couldn't put back on. I'm trying to do this as much as I can by myself um, because I'm slow, I'm learning, I'm trying to do the things, um, let my brain work without having someone waiting there for me, which, you know, good and bad, sometimes it's it would have been great to have some help. So I ended up climbing from the back seat into the front seat and out again every time I'm trying to shut, uh, work on the shot. I got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't do it on my own anymore. So I asked my partner to come in so that he could help arrange every little thing um, and get me in focus sitting in the cab. And so he came in and he arranged the stuff and was really helpful. He 
went to film school. He's been doing this stuff for a long time. So he was able to give me some, some tips, help with framing, help with something. And then he had the great idea to take that LED light. So he was holding it and he was just like slowly moving it. So this part of the car um, would create a shadow and some movement. And I perform. I was like, I'm in a spaceship. I, I had a keyboard that you couldn't see in my lap just because it helped with, for me to be like, I'm practical. I'm typing on a keyboard, do, do, do. Buttons and I like buttoned all over the place. I didn't know what my spaceship was going to look like. I didn't have a story yet even really. I was just like being in space and looking longingly at the stars and being amazed. All I wanted to do was, can I make this work? Can I make this look like something to then create a story? So that's how I ended up with this shot. And then in post, there wasn't enough movement. I wanted to look like I was speeding towards somewhere with motion of the stars. So I copied the clip that I wanted and I cropped it just so that I could see the stars. And I had it move slightly over the frame. So I had one shot. What am I gonna do with it? I did not have a story yet, but I knew I needed one because week one was the goose. I had a story, it was easy to edit together, it was fun to work on, it was great. Week two, storms, I didn't come up with a story. I came up with some visuals that I was interested in and I felt pressured because I wanted to film something while it was raining. And it turned into a music video, a vibey thing, it was okay. Um, learned a lot uh, and one thing I learned is that I want to have a story. So once I knew that I had this shot, I saw, okay, so now what story do I want to tell? I got excited about this idea that was based on quantum cryptography and so I came up with this sci-fi idea and I was like, okay, so now that I have that, what do I need to accomplish that? So I knew that I had this shot outside establishing. I wanted a shot over the shoulder looking at the dashboard console so I could highlight the message sending message receipt piece of it. And then I figured I'd probably need uh, a reverse of me looking at the dashboard, which I'd have to cheat in a whole other way. So I knew I'd have three different monitors. Um, I had a computer monitor, my iPad, and a Surface tablet. And I went online and I found on YouTube, this creator put up a green screen cockpit of a spaceship that said fair use for projects. So I'm like, thank you. And I brought that in to my editing software and I just zoomed in on pieces of the console and divided it up into three. And then I added the message sending graphic and put it in there. So in much the same way as the first shot, I started to build out my cockpit. So I just started cobbling things together. I knew I needed something to put these things on. I had these yoga boards uh, that flipped over, have this cool pocketing. I was like, that's kind of spacey if it shows up. I knew that I wanted to make a black background so I could really crush the blacks bring up the contrast in post um, so it would just look like nothingness outside. So I hung black moving blankets that we got from Home Depot, pretty cheap, uh, back when we moved. Arranged the monitors in a way that I felt was like dashboardy. I took the computer monitor off its stand so I could prop it up and I had an art easel that I put the tablets on. And I did a lot of trying to figure out how do I hide the easel and I ended up putting a black shirt over the top of it so that it wouldn't show from the sides and then the big arm of it would be covered and hopefully I could mask it in post, which I could. And then we have these old disco balls lying around so I took two spheres and put camping lights underneath them just to give them some light. And I have this piece of art that's kind of prismatic. So I took that same Christmas light and had it shine into the prism. So that would give some like dynamic moving. Yeah, so I was pretty pleased with how that all came out. It was tough to figure out like where in frame I needed to be because I wanted this like over the shoulder. Instead of getting just the back of my head, you could get more side of my face. And then just like how tall, how short, how close could I get? So we did a lot of fiddling there. 
the framing we had of our cockpit, we had a whole bunch of black space that in my mind was like the window out into the cosmos, but there was nothing there, it was just black. And so I got stock video footage of just a starry night sky and I cropped it in a way that gave the perspective of windows. And so it gave some visual interest, it got some motion. Something that was really helpful is that my partner had us do lens flares with the purple light so that I could overlay that onto shots that didn't have that motion to give some continuity and that helped with some edits. We were thinking like, okay, what else do I need? Can I get it in this, in this setup? Knew I needed a reverse, so my partner filmed me close up, handheld, so you couldn't really see anything in the back, but we didn't take the time to do the lighting properly and that really showed, so it's a shot that I didn't end up using. Another shot I didn't end up using because I actually ended up changing the story even after I got into post because I didn't write out all of the voiceover that I wanted to add before I shot this. I had my idea. I thought it would be like jump cuts in time just like of, of what, what am I doing in this space pod, in this small space for a long period of time. There'd be eating, getting tired of the space food. There'd be sleeping or falling asleep, maybe like doing like weird space exercises, sitting down. But when I got to starting to put together the edit to see like, and write actually writing it and, and recording the VO, I was just like, this isn't very interesting. It's not interesting to me. It's not gonna be interesting to you, whoever you are watching this. Thank you for being here. I took the dog for a walk and I was thinking about it. And, and I was thinking like, oh, what if she, me, the astronaut, doesn't know if the person who's going to receive the message is actually alive or not. So there's stakes in the receipt of the message, um, making that button more interesting. So I just made it the one message rather than sending a message every day and like updating how things are going. And I found that with that story, I didn't need anything else. It would have been nice, maybe more shots, I mean. Could have helped, it could have benefited the story, Should could have made some of the cuts easier, but Part of this is to actually like get things done, get things out and learn from them. And I was running out of time in the week. So, uh, so that's what I ended up with. So let's talk about what I learned. I learned that with a very simple setup, I could do things that look kind of cool and unexpected. I learned that in post, I can augment and affect some things, but they can only go so far. I learned that knowing your story before you go into shoot is really helpful. There's something about the VO performance that left something to be desired. I wish that I had done something different, but, it, but I couldn't put my finger on it while I was recording it and performing it. I think that it, it ended up being too fast in general. There weren't enough like distinguishing of moments, but on the other hand, there's so much sci-fi stuff that we just were throwing terminology out at you. We, I'm, I'm acting like I've made a big sci-fi film now. Like books and movies will like throw things at you to get give you a feel of this world and get you curious of this world. And I wanted to do some of that in the VO about, I have a whole backstory with these characters that was irrelevant for this 45 second short, but it helped me to know what story I was telling. So I think that the next time that I attempt something of this style, I figure out how do I craft the performance beats so that it's better communicated. I think this is another place where it would have been great to have more footage and more options to cut to because in order to give more breathing room, to the, to the voiceover, I'd need more footage to cover it. And I didn't have that. I did myself a disservice by not taking the time and effort to do another setup. And hopefully what I've really learned is what I'll need when I'm actually doing the filming. On the filming days, what shots do I need? What angles do I need? What's gonna tell the story? Watching it back, there's this whole like, how do you start? You wanna hook people, especially I'm putting this on like, TikTok and Instagram and like the first two seconds mean so much and I'm trying to battle with that. Like what's my taste? What do I want to see versus what do these apps demand? And I think that I'm 
leaning towards just going with my gut. And if it like, it doesn't do well in the algorithm, it doesn't do well in the algorithm. I'm learning something. I'm learning to help tell stories in the way that I find interesting. What else do I want to tell you? You're great. I hope this was informative for you. It was informative for me just to like talk it out and talk it through and give myself a little woohoo pat on the back. I did a thing. I did a thing that was a lot of fun that looked a lot cooler than I thought I could make it. Let me know if this is something that you liked, seeing the behind the scenes, hearing my thoughts about the projects, you know, do all those things. Like, subscribe, let me know what you liked, what you want to see more of. Hopefully that's what I like and what I want to do more of too. So yeah, that's week three of the challenge, what I did, what I learned. Uh, hopefully it helps you if you're interested in pushing yourself as a filmmaker, pushing yourself as a creative, just wanting to insight into how things work and the trial and error of filmmaking. Uh, that's what we're here for. I'm no expert. I'm learning myself. So I hope you stick around to learn along with me. See you later. Bye-bye. It's been 30 years since I had spoken and had my last contact. I used my last energy fuel transmission to get out a message to those I love. This is Milk Bone with their final message. <laughs> Cut.